Sequencing and editing with Ableton Live is a lot more fun and easy when you know the right shortcuts. So we put together a collection of our favorites. Let's check them out. Let's start with some MIDI editing shortcuts. By double clicking on a MIDI clip, I'll be able to see the clip content in the clip window. And right away, I'll be in the pencil tool mode. Pencil tool is great for just punching in your notes in the beginning. But once you have a few notes laid out in there, you're gonna to wanna to get out of the pencil tool by hitting the letter B to move to the breakpoints tool. The breakpoints tool allows us to access the more advanced modifiers and shortcuts of the MIDI editor, as well as just grabbing chunks using this like lasso tool function. Once we have that selected, we can use our arrow keys to move those selections around and we can hit zero to temporarily turn those notes off or on. In addition, we can use our option key and arrows to change the notes that are currently selected or shift an option to increase or decrease the amount of notes that are selected. This is really, really handy for getting around in the MIDI editor and all we need to do is hit escape to no longer be focused or selected on those notes. In addition to that, once we have notes or a single note selected, we can hit Command D on almost anything in live to duplicate it. Now we're repeating that particular selection. That's quite handy. And lastly, once we have a sequence that we like, we can compare it to other sequences in our track by just holding Command, selecting it, and then selecting other MIDI sequences on our arrangement. By holding Command and selecting my sub bass as well as my drum kit now, I can zoom in and use two fingers to scroll down to the correct octave. And now I'm able to see both my bass line and my drums together in the same clip window. This is really handy for creating interesting sequences that flow and where sounds interlock and maybe overlap or don't overlap. It's great being able to see multiple clips at the same time. And in addition to that, if you hit the letter N, in this view, you will be focusing on the currently selected notes. You can select which colored clip you want to be editing by touching the loop brace on top of the clip, and then when you make your break points or lasso tool moves or arrow keys, like shift left or right to change note length or shift up and down to change octave, you're only affecting the currently selected clip. If I click here on the blue loop brace, now I can do those same modifiers or moves, and I'm only affecting the bass line. Now, again, if I hit N, I'm no longer focused on the currently selected clip, I'm editing all of them. This is new in Live 11, but now I have the ability to do all of those same MIDI editing workflows globally to all the selected clips. You can have up to eight MIDI clips selected at a time. Now, this is really great for people who produce drums all on individual tracks, or maybe just keeping your melody and your bass line interacting and interlocking in a kind of call and response kind of way. Now that we've looked at some MIDI, let's move on to audio. I'm gonna go ahead and click on an audio clip up here. This is my kick drum recording, and I can hold shift and option and use two fingers over the clip to expand it vertically. Now I can come up to the edge of the clip and see brackets and of course change how long that clip is playing for, or I can hold shift on the brackets and I can see that little arrow pop up and now I'm actually stretching the recording on the track. This can be especially fun if you use it in conjunction with splitting and consolidating clips. I made a selection here and I'm gonna hit Command E to split the clip. And now if I go ahead and shift brackets, I'm just stretching that one clip. That's gonna be really fun to slow the bass drum down. Maybe we can even just do it with one kick drum. I'm gonna hit Command-1 and select that, hit Command-E to separate it, hold Shift on my brackets and stretch it. That's especially tasty. And if I wanted to, I could hit the letter R to reverse it. That's especially hot on reverse drum hits for punctuating certain transitions. A reverse kick drum can be a lot of fun in a mix. Let's listen to that. <laughs> It almost simulates like a rewind on the turntable. So that's the letter R, that's especially fun. Last but not least, one of my favorite functions here with editing audio on the arrangement view timeline is just being able to slide the audio file under the currently selected clip. Now, if I make a selection with my mouse here, I can use my arrow keys to move that selection around. I don't even need to hit Command E to split the clip. Just make a selection with your mouse and then use your arrow keys to move those big chunks around. If you have a chunk that you like and you wanna work with it more closely, you can highlight it, hit Command E to split it, and then 
hold shift option and mouse over the clip, you'll see the glove appear. And this allows you to actually grab the waveform and slide it under the track. Now you'll notice that this is stepping to the grid. In any time when I'm using my grid and I want to bypass the grid temporarily, I can hold command. So this would be shift option command. And now I'm sliding those hits under the clip. Once I come up with a combination I like, I can reselect it using shift and I can hit command J to consolidate that now and kind of bake it to a new audio file. I can see here, this one's a little rushed. I'm just gonna grab it, command E, Shift, Option, Command, slide it right onto the grid, Shift and grab it again, and Command J to glue it together. Now it's fixed up. So audio editing on the Arrangement View timeline is really lucrative when you have some nice key commands. Stretching, reversing, sliding, all these different functions are just simple modifiers, and I hope you use them in your practice, and I hope they help you make better sounding music. So. I'd love to hear some feedback on this or learn more key commands that you're using. My email address is jp at slamacademy.com and I'd love to hear from you anytime.